Security analysts and experts are divided about how to effectively handle the security situation in Lamu to permanently win against terrorism and stop the carnage. Kenya has been the regular target for Al Shabaab since it sent troops into Somalia in 2011 in an incursion codenamed Operation Linden Kai. The operation largely succeeded in recapturing many towns and villages from the militia, but Kenyan citizens have continued to pay a price for the invasion. Security expert and former U.S. Marine Andrew Franklin says despite scoring some initial gains, Operation Linden Kai did not succeed in ending Al Shabaab's reign of terror in Somalia. However, thanks to the efforts of the Kenyan military, as well as the African Union peacekeepers stationed in Somalia under Amasan, the group was forced out of Mogadishu in 2011 and has since lost most of its other strongholds in the country, he says. Nevertheless, its fighters continue to attack sites in Somalia regularly and with impunity. Franklin says Shabab's continued ability to carry out elaborate terror attacks both in Kenya and Somalia proves that counterterrorism policies of regional powers that rely solely on military power are not working. To bring an end to the group's deadly attacks in Kenya, in Somalia, and elsewhere in the region, regional authorities urgently need to change strategy. I say, let them pull the troops out, Franklin says. Another security expert, Mohammed al Musa, says recent developments in the Afghan war, including the talks between the U.S. and the Taliban in the negotiated reduction in violence agreement, can provide a blueprint for the resolution of Somalia's conflict. The U.S. is one country that has spent trillions of dollars fighting the Taliban in Afghanistan for years but they decided to change tack and try resolving the conflict by negotiating with the Taliban leadership. It wasn't that bad. The Kenyan government, too, can go that way, Marsa says. The downside of this approach is that amounts to a concession of defeat to the terrorists and is a tremendous climb down after years of insisting we cannot negotiate with terrorists. However, Marsa says both Kenya and the African Union have failed to defeat al Shabaab the military way and insisting on a failed strategy will achieve nothing but more conflict, death and devastation. Now, it is their duty to negotiate with the enemy they failed to defeat. Only through negotiations can they achieve sustainable peace, which would allow Somalia to gain back its sovereignty and Kenyan citizens to feel safe in their schools, shopping centers and homes, he says. Just like the U.S., Kenya, through the AU and the Somali government, could use the withdrawal of foreign troops from Somalia as leverage to push al Shabaab to commit to a ceasefire, Marsa says. A political solution could be put forward in which al Shabaab leaders are offered to join the government and plans are made to integrate their fighters into the Somali armed forces, he says. In the Kenyan context, Muri chairperson Clef Khalifa says the government and security agencies should establish a working relationship with residents in terror prone areas one that is devoid of unfair judgment and unnecessary arrests. He, however, says members of the public will never cooperate with security organs because of the resentment the public holds towards security officers. Lamu residents fear the police more than they fear al Shabab, and that right there is the biggest problem there is. If they can trust you, they can't give you intel, Khalifa says. He says the government has a habit of ignoring security experts' advice with leaders spending time politicking. At the end of it all, innocent people will suffer and all Muslims will be treated as terror suspects, and that is very unfortunate, Khalifa adds. He urges the state to cultivate favor from the public as high-handedness will create more anger but sympathy for the al Shabab militants. Khalifa says the best solution left is for the government to pull out troops from Somalia and allow the war-torn country to solve its own problems. He also proposes that the security operation be called off with immediate effect as an assurance that the security forces are indeed in control of the situation. They are putting the Lamu economy into distress with the operation in place. It will create more anger and many youths will be jobless. This is the area where al Shabab will take advantage, Khalifa says. He says for as long as the security operation remains in place, State projects like the Lamu port and previously targeted towns like Mpktoni are not safe.
let them call it off immediately and withdraw troops from Somalia and bring the soldiers back to secure our borders and all these other volatile areas, he says. The Murray chair says eight years of roadblocks and harassment by security agencies in Lamu has encouraged some youths to join Al-Shabaab. Khalifa adds that historical land injustices are the cause of all tribal clashes in the country and that, as such, the government should look into ways of resettling peasants instead of pushing them to the coast and other areas, creating more chaos. People have genuine resentment against injustices. For instance, the recent arrest of five Amu Ranch farm workers after the recent killings without a shred of evidence, and asking the court for 30 days to complete the investigation, 